Hello and welcome back to a new exciting video on this channel. In this video we will create an extension to the last video where we created a simple CRUD application. And this time we will add this small button here, which allows the user to download the data from the database as a CSV file to his local machine. So the first step is to import the project from the video where we created the CRUD application. But before we can do that, we should install the modules that we used there, so we won't have any problems with these nodes. So we use the dashboard node. The table node. And the MySQL node. Now that that's installed, we can import the project from last time. For that, we go to this menu up here to import. And here you can select a JSON file to import. After selecting your file, you'll get a JSON preview. So you can import it to the current flow or to a new flow. I will use a new flow here. And now that it's imported, we get a new flow. And the first thing I'll do is rename it to dashboard. And I will deploy it to check if it works. And as you can see, the SQL node gets an error. So the problem here is that when you export this node, it won't export the username and the password, which is really important. But it also means that you have to uh, always add it again if you import something. So if I enter my credentials here and deploy again, we can see that it's now properly connected. So now I would like to check the dashboard and as you can see here, there should be a link button here, but sometimes it doesn't show up. For that, you can just refresh your entire node red and then you can see that you have the button right here. So this is the dashboard that we did last time. If we refresh, we get the values in the database. We can add some new ones. Let's add six, for example. And you can also edit those values as well. And the thing I would like to add now is a button down here, which is called Download Data, which allows the user of the dashboard to download the data in this table as a CSV file to his local drive. So we'll go to the first flow, and I will call this one Download Data. First thing we need is a button. We make sure that it's in the database sensor values group because I would like to have it under the sensor values. Then we use the download icon and we call the label download data. Then we will check the layout. I would like to make sure that the download button is underneath the refresh button. We can deploy and check it out. And as we can see, the download button is right here. All right, so if we want to download all the data from our table, we need to select all the values in the database. And since we already did that here in the previous example, we can just copy paste this part and use it right here. So here the select all function just has an SQL request selecting all the values from the table sensor values. And we will check with the debug if we get the right result. So we go right here and download data. We should get three entries with four, two and five. And as you can see, that's exactly what we get. Now we would like to convert this data to CSV format. For that, we will use the CSV node. This one will be in here in parser and there we have the CSV node. That's a node that's standard in the Node-RED environment. So here we need to specify the columns of our CSV. And those are the values of the uh, object keys. So we would like to export all this stuff. So we will use ID, timestamp and value. So ID, timestamp and value. And we'll separate with a comma, but you can also choose some other things here. And the rest is all right, like it is. 
So the next part would be to save the file. For that, we will use a function to predefine the path where we would like to save the data. Because the thing is, if we would like to download the data, we need to first store it on the device where the Node-RED has access to, so we can then export it to another device. I will specify the path in a function node, because then you have the, the option to change the path for different files, for example. Okay, so here I will use data slash static slash files slash sensor values dot csv you will see in a bit what that path actually means and then we have to store the file so we use the write file node and here we specify that the file name should be msg.path so that will take the path that we specified before we would like to overwrite the file and we want to make sure that it gets created if the directory doesn't exist already and now we can test what happens here. So if we use a debug, and we deploy and test it out, we should get an answer here. And now we can go to our Node-RED directory and check out if we, our file is there. So as mentioned in the previous example, I am running Node-RED in a Docker environment because I have multiple instances of Node-RED. That's not really important. The only thing here is that I have to access the files in a different way than you guys have. So here you can see that I have to access data and then I want used slash static slash files. And in here you can see that I have my sensor values file. And I can also open it in the ink build file editor and we can see that the values are in here. Next we have to specify the HTTP static folder so that our Node-RED dashboard has access to this data. We can do that in the settings file. If it's installed locally in your machine you will just go to this file on your hard drive. And here I will search for HTTP static. And just make sure that you select the right one because there are a few ones. So those are the wrong ones. That's wrong as well. Right, and the one we would like to change is this one here. So the single static source. So we can uncomment this one. And here I will have to specify my path. So it's gonna be data slash static. And then we have to save it. And now you will have to restart your Node-RED to make sure that the settings get applied like you wanted. And now we can go on and make sure that we can actually export this file. So for that we will need a few things. So firstly we will need a trigger. So the reason we need a trigger here is that the export would otherwise only work once because the MSG doesn't change actually. So here I will say I would like to send open when an MSG arrives, then I want to wait for 250 milliseconds, for example, and then I will send a reset. You will see where we use that in a moment. So this open and reset will get sent in the payload, but I would like to have it in msg.command. So I'll use a change here. So we will just set msg.command to msg.payload. And now the last and most important thing is where we actually define that we want to download the file. For that we will use a dashboard template because we will have to write some custom JavaScript. All right, so we connect that here. Then I would like to make sure that it's a widget in a group and it should be in the sensor values group specifically. And in here we will just need a script tag because you don't want to actually show anything. And 
Now in here, we need to call a function that has access to the MSG topics. You can see how this works in the official node rights documentation. And here I will have scope dot dollar watch and then I would like to watch the MSG and pass that to a function. And now I will say if the MSG dot payload equals open, I will let open a window which will then download the file specified. So window.open http double dot slash slash. And now you have to put the address of your node red instance. So it should be localhost 1880 and then the path to the file. So slash files. So we can use slash files here because we specified that the HTTP static is data slash static. So we are in here already and now we will specify slash files slash the name of the file. So slash files slash sensor values.csv. And the last thing is that we would like to open this in a new tab. So underscore blank. That makes sure that we actually open it in a new tab. And now the last thing is that we want to call this function here with the scope. So that just makes sure that we have the information required to actually make this if statement right here. Then we can deploy that and check if it works. So we will once again refresh and click on download data. What you have to keep in mind here is that it will actually create a pop-up which may get blocked. So we would like to allow this one for now and open. And I actually forgot to set the files here. And now you can see that we have a sensor values downloaded. If you open the downloaded file with any text editor, you'll see the exact values shown in the dashboard. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. See you next time.